All right, so this is a video of us setting up our wireless uh, channel racks. So we've got two racks here. Uh, the first one we had before, we already owned it. It was uh, installed as a intercom rack uh, in our upstairs booth, but we have since gotten wireless uh, intercoms that don't have any rack mounted hubs or distribution or anything like that. So we emptied the rack out and bought a second one, uh, an exact duplicate, their uh, RK series, uh, Middle Atlantic 12 space racks, uh, really nice little racks. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we just brought the first one downstairs uh, to our front of house booth, and the second one we purchased from Sweetwater and got it put together. Uh, so now what you're not seeing is uh, I'm pulling a couple of parts out of another rack that we had that we didn't use, um, specifically that Furman that you see on the desk there. Um, just a nice little Furman. It's got some lights. It's got the voltage meter on the front of it, which I really like to have, especially when you're talking about, you know, over $10,000 worth of uh, wireless system. So, uh, yeah, so you're watching me uh, go away. I'm getting rack screws. I'm getting all the things that I need. Uh, you saw me put tape uh, on the first side. There I am putting tape on the second side. That's just a preventative uh, measure to uh, prevent metal on metal wear uh, as I put the rack together uh, and as the, all the rest of it goes together. Just make sure we're not rubbing and scraping anything. So uh, those green boxes right there are our BLXR uh, wireless mics. Uh, each box is one channel. So uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have four channels and then a distributor for the antennas and power and then four channels antenna distributor, four channels, antenna di distributor, and we'll do that all the way until we have 24 total channels. So uh, not all 24 are the BLXRs. Um, we've got 20, uh, excuse me, we've got eight QLXDs that you'll see me pull out later, and then 16 of these uh, brand new BLXR uh, Sure wireless systems. So you're watching me pull them out uh, box by box. You're seeing me pull out the wireless mics themselves, the body packs, uh, these came with MX-153 body mics. Um, I have seven of these that I keep personally, um, but these will be kept at the school. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed mine, and I recommended them for this install. So now I'm emptying out all the screws, all the little parts that the mics come with. Uh, you see antenna cables right there on my left, and uh, we're starting to put together the channel boxes. So uh, each rack space uh, will hold two channels. Uh, of wireless once they're all put together. So you see me putting them together. I've got the rack ears on and I just dropped it into that first rack case. So yeah, there they are and I'm going to show you how they go together. They've got little plates with uh, countersunk uh, little holes in them. So putting that all together. Then we put the rack ears on, making sure that the rack ears are facing the correct direction. Screwing those in and then right into the rack, just like that. So you see uh, I've got rack screws that came with it. I'm putting it in, and I left that little space between the uh, power switch and the channels for the antenna distributor. So you'll see me uh, go grab two of those here in a split second and put those in. There they are in those brown boxes. Uh, again, brand new. Uh, so we've got two that were in uh, our previous or our current system. Uh, that came when we opened, and then we're going to pull those as well as we bought four new antenna distributors. So, uh, got to pull all those cables out. These uh, distributors come with tons of little patch cables. Um, pull the actual distributor out and put it in the rack. You see, there it is. Got all the little screws that come with it. Rack screws go in, and they got the little plugs. Uh, normally these little holes are for front-facing uh, omnidirectional antennas. We're not using those, so we're gonna we've got some paddles that we're gonna use. So same thing with all the cables. Got to pull those cables out of the box, uh, unwrap them. We're using the uh, right angle uh, 12 volt DC adapters as well as the little uh, antenna patch cables. Same thing, rack screws, putting it in. And then with this rack, I actually goofed a little bit. Actually, I goofed a couple times. We'll go over each one. Uh, so I started by putting the BLXRs uh, in that first rack. And uh, you're going to watch me put the cables in here. And um, 
I realized that I have three eight channel snakes that I'm plugging into the back of the console. So I'm doing an analog uh, snake directly into the back of our console. And the problem is, is that with three analog eight channel snakes, uh, I wanted to put 12 wireless in one rack and 12 in the other. The problem is I have to divide, a, divide it into 16 and eight for the snakes. So yeah, now you're uh, watching me put in the power cables for uh, the first four channels, the first distributor. Um, as you now know, I'm doing this foolishly because I'm going to have to pull it all out and redo it uh, when I get the QLXD stuff out. Uh, but it gave me some practice uh, with putting the antenna patch cables in and um, showed me some better ways to uh, get them in place easier, especially once we have uh, all 16 in that second rack. So now this is where you start seeing me realize my mistake and I'm having to pull out the BLXR channels. There I'm pulling out all the cables I just put in and I'm putting those rack units in to the second rack. So I'm starting by putting one of the rack units above the other one to leave a space for the distributor that'll be on top. And then I just went ahead and screwed the second one in, and then screwed one underneath it. So now what you don't see me doing is running off to CC17, our uh, room with our 50 55 space uh, rack, and I'm going to take out all of our eight channel units, or all of our eight channels that were in that room uh, already installed uh, when the building opened. So I'm pulling those out and removing all their cables, removing all the distributors, all the antenna cables, and uh, you're gonna start seeing some strange feet up here that are not mine, and uh, they're gonna be bringing in all of the equipment just out of frame. There we go, so we're starting to get loads of uh, receivers and cables and all that sort of stuff put on top of that desk so that we can reinstall it inside these racks uh, once it's all together. Unfortunately all this stuff is just out of frame and I pan across it with the video uh, just for a split second but it's just so fast that you can't really see everything that's there but it's it's basically some pre-assembled uh, Shure QLXD uh, G50 band wireless units and uh, there's uh, two distributors, two intended distributors, and uh, four rack units worth of channels, so eight channels in total. So now we just get a little break while I start getting my stuff and I start cleaning up all the cables in the rack room. And then you'll see me walk in uh, here in just a couple minutes. All right, so everything's been cleaned up. So yeah, there I am. And there's all the QLXD stuff. There it is starting to go into that first rack. I've got eight channels from the old rack that are coming in. Uh, I'm prepping the uh, rest of the bottom. At this point, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with that space at the bottom because I wasn't anticipating only having eight channels in that first rack. So uh, I had a two space drawer uh, and a four space drawer and I was gonna see if I could uh, configure them in some way to fit them in there. Uh, so you'll see me come around with uh, the two space here in about a minute. But uh, spoiler alert, it ended up not working. So I had to, uh, first I tried to use the, the single, or the two space drawer with some spacers. And then I ended up just taking the whole thing apart and putting in the 4U uh, rack drawer with a single unit spacer. 
So yeah, that's what ends up happening there. It's going to happen kind of quick once I get back and actually start messing around with the uh, with the drawers that I had. But uh, yeah, so huge oof trying to figure out the uh, the whole splitting them into two cabinets and having three snakes. So there I am. I'm just organizing the snakes, making sure that everything's going to work, screwing in the rack screws for the QLXD stuff. And then once I'm done with this, I end up walking away again. Yep, there I go. And I'm off to go get those rack drawers. And uh, I'm going to come back and you're going to see the whole thought process of me realizing I screwed up. All right, I'm back. There's my 2U drawer right there. I'm going away, I'm gonna get the other drawer that I'm putting in that two space, thinking I can fit that other one on top of it. I honestly thought that the other drawer was a three space and not a four space. That's kind of why I thought it was gonna work because I had five spaces left in the rack. And I just figured out that it's too big. So now I'm taking out that 2U rack. I'm moving it around. And I will eventually put a 2U spacer on the bottom and a 1U spacer on the top of that one right there. Um, Yep, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do about these spaces. I'm a little ticked off that the uh, having two drawers idea didn't work. I was really hoping I could get the body mics in one drawer and get some extra cabling, patch cables and such, uh, in that 2U drawer, but that's eh, just not going to work. Um, I also tried putting the body packs in the 2U drawer. There's my spacers. Uh, I tried putting the body packs in the 2U drawer, but there's just too many of them, and the little... Uh, cases that they come in with sure uh, were just too big. All right, so there you see me uh, finishing up some cabling on that first rack, making sure that all the antenna cables are in the correct spot, getting power done, uh, and also making sure that I have the cables necessary to latch the two racks together once it's all said and done. So I'll have to have uh, two longer antenna cables to go from the top uh, antenna combiner into the bottom combiner. Uh, antenna combiner in the uh, first rack. So this is day two. So this took two days to do. The first day I did just after school by myself. This is day two where I'm, uh, I've got a little bit of help and I'm uh, actually getting the rest of the BLX units together. So um, this is Talia here. She's one of the star technicians who really got this going. She helped me through pretty much the entire rest of the process. Uh, we'll also see another uh, young guy named Garrett come in and helping us. Um, we also had an event happen right in the middle of all this, so you're going to see us stop for a split second and just kind of sit and be quiet for a little bit while the event is happening. And um, yeah, that's just uh, how it goes in the entertainment industry sometimes. So uh, here we are putting together the next four channels that will go in the second rack. And you see her getting all the things together, learning how to put these uh, rack units together. She's starting them off with her fingers and then she will eventually screw all of them down with the drill. While she's doing that, I'm starting to set frequencies on the first rack. So uh, I had to change the frequencies just a little bit so that we could accommodate all 24 microphones.
All right, so you're starting to see me put together that uh, channel set that she was working on. I'm finishing it up, putting it together real quick, getting it in the rack. She had a class to go to, so I'm emptying the boxes, uh, pulling it back. There's the gentleman uh, telling me that we have an event. Uh, I had no idea that we had an event up until that point. So uh, I turned the camera off, ran, and set some stuff up, and then put it away. Um, you can see the snakes right there in the bottom left-hand corner. They're just kind of chilling there, haven't been plugged into the board yet. Um, that was another thing I was working on while I was on the floor. So we're getting all these channels put together pretty quickly now. Here we go. Now we've got the first eight channels with combiners in there. So now I'm off to go get the next set of boxes and get ready to put in the last uh, eight channels. There's Tali again. She's come back from her class. From this point on, it goes pretty quickly. So we've got all the cables out for that second to last combiner. Showing her how it all goes together. And so starts the stack of boxes. Uh, and you'll see throughout the rest of the video that that uh, stack of boxes where that brown box is right now uh, that stack will get pretty big. We've got uh, 16 new microphones as well as the four new um, antenna combiners and all of them put together will stack pretty high on that little table. It will actually go be outside of the frame um, when we get to the point where we're actually doing that event that I mentioned earlier. So there you see the second rack. It's got uh, all, it's got three of the four combiners in and eight of the 16 channels. Just trying to clear a little space. So at this point we're just putting channels together, getting the rack ears on, putting the pieces together and getting them inside that rack. That's pretty much the goal at this point. All right, so you can see me back there. I'm trying to fit those microphone packs into that one drawer, and it did not work at all. And this is where I figure out I'm going to have to get that larger drawer back and put the larger drawer in. Um, to get it to work. So that was my brain process happening while I was sitting there on the floor. I was like, ah, oh, dang it, I'm going to have to rip out that front panel, take my spacers out, and put that bigger drawer in. Uh, so now I'm off to go get the bigger drawer, and you'll see me walk in with it in here, here in a split second. You can also uh, see our stack of boxes right there. Uh, you're not seeing all of them, but uh, there's there's quite a few hanging right there on the, the edge of the booth there. Just kind of 
hanging out and that will continue to get larger as we uh, put the rest of the channels in. We've still got six channels to go to put into that second uh, rack. All right, there I am taking out that first drawer that I put in. Yeah, there it comes. Taking the 2U spacer out. Taking the 2U drawer away. Bringing in the big drawer. There it is. Putting it in. Moving it around, making sure all the cables are in the right spot. Uh, I had to move around one of the power adapters that was sitting on top of the drawer, the first drawer. So I was moving that around. Um, put it on its back uh, when I was putting the uh, spacer in. And now Garrett's here, and he's helping us put the XLRs in. He's helping us patch in the, the first rack so we actually get our first eight-channel snake plugged in into the back of the board and here's where we have the event. So we get halted uh, by this event. We're just kind of hanging out. Talia is actually still working. She's putting in screws by hand so as not to use the drill and make noise. Um, we just kind of have to wait for a split second and you'll see us get right back to work as soon as the event is over. So here it's finishing up. You can see people milling around at this point. Just kind of waiting for more people to leave so we can get back to using our tools and get back to work. All right, here we go. Looks like we're we're back in business. And we're putting together all the power supplies for the uh, rack that's going to have the 16 channels in it. So there's a lot of little patch cables that are going to go into that little console. And we need to make sure that we have all of them. So we were sitting there counting them, making sure we had all of the right ones. We had the ones that we needed. Uh, and we kind of got them organized in a, in a way to where we, we could put them in pretty stinking quickly. So uh, that's what Garrett's working on, um, getting all these cables organized. Um, I'm getting all the uh, rack hardware ready to go in. And Talia is putting together those last four channels. All right, it looks like our boxes are starting to disappear. We had some help from Mandy Strange and Bennett uh, pulling those boxes away, getting them to the trash can. Yep, so now they're gone completely. So we got our free space. We just got the hardware in the middle, we got the cables on the left, and we got those last four channels going together on the right. Now it's just a waiting game. We're getting all the rack hardware in place. Tali and I left to go get some cake. The event had some uh, some cake to celebrate. Garrett gets those couple of channels in. There he goes. <clears throat> All right, so now you're watching us put those finishing touches on the last two channels. cables together at this point. You can watch me actually put up uh, the antennas. So these are the first stands that we tried with the antennas. You're not going to see it in this video, but we actually opted for uh, some desk stands to go on anyway, because we've got this beveled edge on the wood top of our front house booth. And uh, those clamp on mic stands really did not like that beveled edge. Uh, you kind of see the gap there, how it really just, it doesn't want to stay on there. So we we switched them out later. These last two channels are going together. 
we had a little mistake where the um, put the bracket on upside down so that the countersink was towards the channels and not towards the screws. You can see all our cables now, how we've organized them out. And our last two channels going into that final rack space. So now we're going to tip it up and lift it onto the table. I'm going to move the camera so you can see the back of it. And we got to plug all the cable spaghetti in. So normally I'm a cable freak. I really hate messy cabling. But in an instance like this where you have so many small cables and there's really nothing to attach them to on the inside of the rack, no uh, those like zip tie holes or, or extra mounting spots, uh, you really just kind of have to, to let it go in a way. So you're going to watch us plug all these things in. Same as that first rack, uh, we're just going to be doing it basically tw twice as many cables so instead of eight channels we've got 16 that are going into this board so four antenna combiners and 16 channels four channels per combiner so there's all the spaghetti cabling and at this point all three of us are just going at it we even have a fourth guy Ethan Wood who steps in at one point and all four of us are sticking our hands inside the back of this rack to get these cables taken care of and we make pretty short short time of it all right so now we're starting to get power going as well as the cascades the cascades uh, being taken care of by uh, Ethan and then I'm taking care of a lot of the power cables you also see uh, Garrett grabbed a couple of the power cables and put those in. There he goes. So now it's really starting to look like a mess. This this kind of stuff drives me crazy, but I just kind of have to live with it in this circumstance. All right, so there we see Talia finishing up a couple of things. She really wanted to do those last couple of power cables, so by all means, I let her do it. So we're really starting to get to the point where we're uh, finalizing that last couple of things. Uh, we're getting power supplies ready for the combiners and distributors. We're making sure the antennas are connected to the first rack and that we have the cables ready for... the first rack to connect to the second rack. So now we're talking about our game plan, how we're going to go, uh, now we're all connected, how are we going to go from the second rack to the first? So now we're going to grab it, put it on the floor, and we just stare here for a little while while we get this uh, into place and then you'll watch me uh, move the camera so we can see the finished product. And there we go. Taking off that uh, protective tape that we had on there. And that's just about it. Uh, we turned them on, had them running, and uh, yeah, it took about, I don't know, maybe six hours total to get everything into the rack and get the antenna cables run and the power going. I hope you learned something, and we'll check out the rest of the videos. Thank you so much.